and we're live. Yay! Hello, everyone. Are you out there? Are you doing anything? What's going on? We're getting ready for another Linux Our weekly daily on Wednesday. The ball. Immediately. Yes. That's Aww. what he does, man. Listen, I don't yes. judge you. <laughs> Hugs back, Eric Perrin. <laughs> Let's be real, man. I don't pay enough attention to you to judge you. It would be unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, what's going on? Uh, we were having a riveting discussion about uh, anime characters and Mazdas. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is a true story. <laughs> Two of my favorite things. <laughs> At least Nothing. number five and number six on the list anyway. <laughs> like a little show prep. Oh, we do have a lot yes. of stuff to cover. Yeah. Today. We even have a nice little Microsoft segment because they done did a dumb. Well, yeah. <laughs> depends on how you look at it. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> they got caught. It. <laughs> yeah. That's basically it. Well, th I mean, the argument's going to be caught doing what, though? <laughs> hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hope everybody is having a reasonable midweek. <laughs> <laughs> have they, um,. I, I saw that um, the Johnson was like, hey, man, everyone from Hong Kong, come on over. He's going to have a three million, like, um, immigration things, Rob. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, he had to do something good, otherwise he's not getting reelected anytime soon. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but can people... Um, How's the NHS doing? Are you able to have people like out and about moving around or? There are a lot more people out now because it was semi lifted. It's uh, more businesses are now open uh, and they're basically testing the waters to see how big the jump is in cases now that people are going out and about some more. Yeah. Yeah. And thus far, they haven't reissued a lockdown order, so. Seems okay. to be manageable for the time being. Right. I okay. know that my workload has increased significantly because they brought back a bunch of um, retiree doctors that need laptops. <laughs> so I, yeah. Mm. <laughs> there's the, there's a lot more to do. I don't know if I'd want to be on the receiving <laughs> end of that. <laughs> yeah, our our restrictions are being. So slowly lifted but the problem is when the riots came so then everyone's closed again so <laughs> but hopefully next week um the stores will start opening so you can go inside of them a few of them have started the mom and pop shops and whatnot but the malls and stuff are still not open well they yeah, were places that drive a lot week. of people yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> i did notice some of the fast food places are back up in action Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, McDonald's uh, is open again. Salty, mm -hmm. thank you for gifting Arthur another month of subs. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Salty. You're awesome. <laughs> the, um, what was it? I think it was a Popeye's chicken uh. that I noticed that was open. Mm. <laughs> because people no. were going, I was like, all oh, right, right on. Turning, turning mm. back to normalcy. In some ways yeah domino's never really closed they were still doing deliveries and uh, just doing the door dash they drop the pizzas at your door ding dong you open it there's just pieces like oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah can, can we keep this up <laughs> pretty much <yeah. laughs> so they like this way as someone who isn't a big fan of you know other human beings <laughs> just crack the door and drag out the hook Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, door pizza, man. Don't knock it. <laughs> yeah, Ben and Pedro, what's happening here with the restaurants is um, you can start going to them as long as they have outdoor areas, which most of ours do, which is really good. Um, but what's nice is they're going to block off streets for the restaurants, and I know other communities are doing that. It's really good. So you can uh, have more space and... 
not be so nervous about going. <laughs> it's going to be that limited occupancy. I mean, yeah, you've seen that with like a lot of gyms and places like that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's no, just man. yeah. Today, uh, but, uh, but yeah, this week was. <laughs> I had to think of what. To, I don't know why I was thinking what day it was. It's, uh, it's Wednesday. I do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so this week, it, you know, all the, the the malls and everything were supposed to open. And I was looking forward to Monday going to the mall <laughs> and getting some good food at the restaurants there. And Yeah, you and, and Steve are, like, having to rough it. You're like, all the places that give us our food. We can't go to them. Yeah. <laughs> see them hold on I suppose we must need, uh, we must have to start cooking. Oh, no, no, no. no. We, they'll, they'll be eating lunchables <laughs> before that. No, unfortunately, over half our restaurants do take out and delivery, so it's not a bit of a problem. But yes, some of our favorite restaurants are, aren't open yet. <laughs> Then. What Pedro and I are both perplexed. Pedro and I both enjoy cooking. I, I know. Yes. <laughs> we do the cooking, so it, yeah, no. I don't yeah, get you guys. I know. <laughs> yeah, so, you're so funny. I love to cook when my grandmother was around, but it just yeah, I wasn't interested after that. <laughs> my dad was an amazing cook. Mm -hmm. He did most of the cooking when I grew up. Well, I'm just glad the restaurants were because I was genuinely worried about you and Steve starving. Okay. <laughs> are you building another PC, Pedro? Uh, no, those are just the ones I'm currently looking at. Don't, don't mm -hmm. buy me any more stuff from my wish list, okay? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think I might need to make that private. <laughs> I've got them on mine, too. <laughs> and there you go. That's why I have one for the studio. Yeah. I'm Right now, I'm just looking at stuff, and whenever I find something interesting, I put it there. The only time I'll do it, I'll worry about, I'll see something like, oh, I need to get that. I'll put it, but I'll buy it the next day. I don't think I've ever been bit by that. I know if you, anyone ever pays attention to our studio wish list, you'll see some from random things like wall outlets. I'm like, yeah, I need to get pick those up. Yeah, I just I I keep that because I'm poor. <laughs> so yeah, no, I have to basically stack around my purchases. And I already had my uh, effort moment this month Pedro, so. that's not poor that's <laughs> being fiscally responsible yeah <laughs> like let's not spend everything i make and you have when you yes. have the option listen i understand man i've been like i have to spend everything i make but what i you know what i mean by that is like that you know mm. that extra money left over just don't blow it put a little bit back yeah. Um, yeah no that's <laughs> something i do and uh, since basically since nori she can't work right now because her job was being around people. Yeah. So yeah, it's my paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I no, hear you, we, Pedro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have to it's like payday comes. All right, whatever is left from this month, savings account. Immediately. Just don't even look at it. Don't get any ideas. It immediately doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we were talking about Raspberry Pis earlier. Pedro has decided he has to actually do something with the 4 gig model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, before I get the 8 gig model, yeah. yes. <laughs> I went the 8 too, but I'm going to wait till more and financial stability. Supposedly the 8 <laughs> will come with the um, actually functional Type-C connector. <laughs> yes. There's Not nothing the jury-rigged version shh, that's shh, currently on that one. No, no, no. Listen, man, there's nothing wrong with it. Come on. We didn't do a hardware revision because there was something we did because <laughs> we felt like it. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh. Reboot, reboot your tablet. He's he's got <laughs> he's got an Amazon Fire. <laughs> so that's why. 
Oh, uh, um, when we had the big, uh, like, move at work where everyone got shuffled around uh, their desks. And so, uh, teams were forced to sort of empty their cupboards. <laughs> and a bunch of teams had purchased equipment that they hadn't cleared through IT beforehand, so it was just literally sitting in a cupboard. <laughs> Uh, gathering dust, and uh, one of them had bought, like, 15, um, fire, it wasn't even the HD versions, it were the, uh, 8-inch old, old versions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The trunky ones. It's like, what did you buy that for? Oh, we wanted to, uh, have a, sort of a, a tablet that could also make videos and do this and do ah. that, just like... What? Why didn't you ask? <laughs> dude, I bought <laughs> my little local nonprofit, dude, because they sold them in six packs, man, and I bought five or six six packs of those and gave them to them. I'm like, you give these up, kids. Because yeah. they were stupid cheap. I think the six pack was like $120 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that probably explains yeah. that then. <laughs> I mean, it came in a handled, like, bag, yeah. like, cardboard thing. It's like, here. Yeah, the, the, those oddly shaped things. Even the 10 inch <laughs> tablet just comes in a cardboard thing. You're like, yep, that's it. That's what you get. <laughs> Very true, Arthur. Oh. Yeah, Steve Husband can come in here and listen on my extra headset I have hooked up. <laughs> but he'll be in the shot. <laughs> I need to grab something to drink, and I think we'll get more of this. Okay. You go do that, and I'll uh, go pee after you come back. <laughs> All right. Okay. And I will, too, after you come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about you, Jill? Have you been playing any new games? No, but I've been you know, playing the one... given your busy time schedule, I know that probably oh. not, but... <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I actually haven't had time to breathe because I've been preparing all these podcasts. <laughs> but yeah, so I actually... Um, I did play some, some more of Monster Hunter World that Aldeus uh, gifted me. That's been fun. Nice. <laughs> and Ark Survival Evolved, he also gifted me, which... Um, <laughs> I've been playing playing with and it does work much better now on Linux than it used to. Nice. <laughs> and also Arthur and um, um, the Hacknet that he gifted me, I played with that more. So I've been trying to. It's 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 funny because last night I was like, I was, I was like, I've gotta I've gotta before I go to bed I gotta play something because I haven't been able to. <laughs> So I did a little Oh, bit. you're not kidding, Salty. It's a, Jill was all over the place this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, ex Salty knows because he found me <laughs> on one of uh, English Bob's podcasts. <laughs> Jill's the internet pandemic of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to listen to this podcast. Oh, there's Jill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never listened to that one. Oh, there's Jill. <laughs> I even had someone in chat said, oh, I just... I, and it was someone who, who hadn't ever met me, but saw me on the Destination Linux podcast and Steve's very own. And like, oh, wow, she gets around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go on EB stream again, Exalty. That was really fun. And I like he's got such a fun sense of humor. <laughs> Englishman. Oi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I am talking to my friend in England right now. <laughs> okay. I guess it's it's time for us to take a break now, Pedro. <laughs> Go on then, Jill. I'll go after okay. you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so one of the things, uh, if you have a Microtech device, you might want to update to uh, if you're on the stable branch. They just rolled out uh, DOH. 
So you can do the DNS encryption. Yeah. All you have to do is, uh, I mean, you can SSH into the router or use the web thing, whatever, but just import the uh, root certificates uh, by Yoink Bind from Cloudflare and just set that up and write it in. We need. Uh, someone was talking to me about Microtik routers and router OS is oh it was Civic yeah yeah <laughs> well, uh, Civic was like oh this is really neat it's like yes it is <laughs> and it does all this stuff yes it does <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's just a teeny tiny little four port yeah <laughs> that's what I about there. it's the same operating system that you would have on a CRS cloud router from Microtik as you get on the like, <laughs> $35 like do nothing one and you <laughs> all the rope you need man just <laughs> go on hang yourself go ahead <laughs> stack enough IP rules hello for... Pennywise what's up man <clears throat> but oh man it's going to be interesting. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the benefits. Yeah, I guess like, the ISP can't snoop on my DNS track. I don't care. I don't personally, but. They can't snoop. And if you're doing it at the router level, um, they can't block. They can't uh, force redirect everything to their DNS mm -hmm. to um, block certain domains. <laughs> Mm. Which is why, um, of all the things that Virgin lets you change in the, their, uh, Hub 3, they don't let you touch the DNS server. <laughs> well, you're only going to hit that if you're getting DHCP, though, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, so, come on, Pedro. It, it's so easy <laughs> to set up static IPs on Android devices. It, <laughs> Android devices, Nori's laptop, Nori's desktop, all the laptops. <laughs> I could set up a different SSID that uses the HTTP on that one. Hey, yeah, chips. Um, but yeah, it, it's fine. For what it is right now, it's fine. And I installed um, PIA on Nori's devices. So... If she needs to access something, she knows how to use the VPN now. <laughs> yeah, Charter has um, their two, like, dynamic ones that they throw up there. And, or they just go and SSA. It's console, you're like, dynamic guy, off. <laughs> Done. I hate dealing with networking, by the way. That's so that. <laughs> Naturally, what I did was buy, like, one of the most cantankerous devices known to man. <laughs> uh, most, to be fair, most home um, routers give you a IP that it tries. It always tries to give you the same IP on the same device, if it remembers it. <laughs> oh, well, at my command console, I just take that right click and bind that, so it'll just... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> automatically just give that it'll still use dhcp but it'll always give it that ip address period it's like that was intuitive so <laughs> I, I went to my intuitive microtech wall and went one <laughs> <laughs> power line adapters man I, I saw you talking about those chips and i use a uh that's why this is like the 1200 um because that's how I get the Ethernet out to my garage. So I could have Wi Fi out there because I have this Faraday cage of a house that, like, five gig will work in a room ish. Just don't get to the far end of the room to wherever that device is. <laughs> yeah, I just used. I, Let's grab the Netgear one. I was like, blunk, blunk, make sure they were on the same breaker, and done. 
never touched it since. And I'm sure it just died, so. <laughs> okay, there's a gel. It's my turn to pee. I'll be back. <laughs> what kind of Wi-Fi do you have set up in the house? Just a classic 2.4 and, and 5 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. Just in that one room? <laughs> oh, um, um, and uh, yeah, it, it just comes from here. So usually the signal's pretty good, but occasionally there'll be interference. I, I've been thinking about getting a, a booster to boost it around the house a little better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's because of this room, this room, you know, it's. It's uh, plaster and chicken wire, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the signal doesn't go out of it too much, too well when the door is closed. Great place so. for a base station, man. Come on. Yeah, well, it's nice because I don't have to worry about the signal going outside of the house. So <laughs> or that room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I've been wanting to get a little booster uh, for it because normally we use uh, wired in, in the rest of the house, but where Stephen has been building his models, there's. There's a no wired connection over there, so. <laughs> yeah, Chibs is um, getting back in the um, power line networking, which is really good these days. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Yeah. At first, yeah, Chibs stuff have... was bad. Oh, it was, it was horrible. Yeah, um, I've thought about that, too, because we have new wires in the house. New. It was all replaced. But you can feel for me, Chibs. Um, <laughs> it might be probably Sunday when we get started. I don't think we'll be dropping um, a 10 gig fiber link from this room into the basement so I can get it to my power edge. Oh, nice. But pulling fiber, so much easier than pulling it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no comparison. <laughs> yeah, my fiber line is right over here and it's. You have to, of course, not bend it and keep it nice and straight. <laughs> I, I lo love it since I've had symmetric. So much nicer. Yeah, that was the first thing I did with this house, Salty, was I put Cat <laughs> cat 6. That was the new stuff when I got this mm. place everywhere yeah. before I moved anything in because I knew I was going to be knocking some holes in some walls and... um. Which is good, because I have Ethernet. I should have put, always put more than you need, um, mm -hmm. capacity-wise. Because at the time, I never thought, you know, oh, I can send a full 100 megabytes? I'll never <laughs> saturate yes. that. Yeah, well, <laughs> constantly. But it'll probably help the resale value of the house. So. <laughs> yeah. We had uh, my my poor brother go into the crawl, crawl space and put wired around the whole house, <laughs> but we paid him to do it. Hard work. <laughs> and drilled little holes in the floor. <laughs> but yeah, Steve, I just I'm, I'm just probably just gonna get him a, a little repeater because I have already wired in the living room, um, but it's just the corner that he's in has issues. So. Tell him to get a better corner. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's he's moving outside to his new st <laughs> his studio out there. He's been working on. He's got a... Oh, boy. Oh, That's we're going to get a laser... That's what being stuck at home has done to yeah. Steve. He's like, hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, I have ben. a backyard. <laughs> yeah, Ben, besides, besides building a spray booth and a vacuum floor machine and a 3D printer, we're going to get a laser printer. I'm really excited about a laser <laughs> printer. Yeah, like typical office laser printers yeah. that use toners. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> printer, the printer where you can print out models, 2D. Um, I just spaced. <laughs> uh, I have a laser plasma cutter. <laughs> no, I have <laughs> or laser, laser cutter. <laughs> Steve husband, help help me. The the laser cutter. That's it. It's a laser printer. Well, it is a laser printer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
laser cutter, a nice one. See, Mike, yeah. you see, Mike, that's what I'm thinking about. I, I want a laser powered CNC machine. Just where, yeah. <laughs> what material can it burn through? I don't know. See, that's my problem, too. That's the reason I don't have a laser cutter. I thought about buying one with two separate. I had the really good oh. opportunity to buy one. It's like, no, because I'm just going to be walking around my house going, hmm, hmm, I wonder if that'll. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it is a far worse case than the label maker of like that needs a label mm -hmm. that's like oh i could etch something into that all right all right mm -hmm. uh hey let's do a show yes mm -hmm. okay let's mm -hmm. see we got everybody no. and i must say these yoga pants they're comfy Oh, good. I got them on good. <laughs> I meant to ask Pedro. <laughs> I've, I've got yoga pants on, too. <laughs> That's more normally what I wear. <laughs> for pants. <laughs> I'm going to assume, Pedro, that you get on yoga yoga pants. Yoga yoga yeah. pants, yes. <laughs> I'm just glad that they are, you know, black and you can't see oh, them yeah. as I walk p away. Oh, man. <laughs> because because see the they're right along. up against my keister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Let's get into it. Let's do it. It's going to be a thing. In three, two. Cut the music off, old man. There we go. And get down to the right. There we go. Get that locked in. Take three, two. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break. Hey, and just talking about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of open source. Fair warning, we do like to have a little bit of fun on the show. So if you're allergic to laughter, run <laughs> while you still can. That might Aww. be a thing. Hi, I'm Vin. That Jill. That mm -hmm. Pedro. Hello. Yes, hello, All hello. Lots. It's got to bro. <laughs> Everyone watching this live, man. Um, What's going on? What's new with everyone? Pedro, do you get anything exciting? Do you have that? What do you have in that cup of water? Uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, literally water. I had tea before, but uh, it's warm enough in here that I don't need to tea anymore. So, yeah, water. <laughs> I've had that problem recently when I was like, man, it's a bit 32 degrees outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toasty. Toasty. Jill, do you get anything fun going on? Oh, yes. So, wow. So I have done eight Linux podcasts and video streams in the last week. <laughs> and everything from, of course, LWW and our game streams to uh, uh, guest hosting on the Eng English Bob's podcast and Linux un Unplugged twice because we, we uh, recorded two in one week. <laughs> so, and uh, Steve's very own podcast. Gosh, I've been everywhere. <laughs> when I, I I actually, you know, added them up. Oh my gosh, that's the most I've ever done in one week. <laughs> so, but it good. was a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Pretty decent, man. <laughs> Top of the show notes. I was in playing around with a bunch of stuff. Uh, I did make a new um, episode of Interfacing Linux. Like I said, I was going mm -hmm. to do if you are into music production, audio production, anything like that. You, even if you like doing the beeps and the boops, you might want to play with Outdoor. You just notice that Outdoor 6.0 is out. There's no build instructions for that. Never really has mm -hmm. been. If you even if you go to the page, you're like, download it, have fun, guess out, you know, the entire paragraph of dependencies you're going to need. Also, you can get stuck in a dependency circle jerk on Ubuntu and Debian if you don't do it in the right order. So that video has been dropped like it's mildly warm for patrons it'll go live for public consumption i think friday at noon so no worries there i still got to get the uh, stuff on the web zone for a little guide also mm -hmm. i have a network cable actually i got a couple of network mm -hmm. cables mm -hmm. my network <laughs> cables look different than most people's but yeah i'm up to something more on that probably Maybe mm, next week, nice. maybe not. I only report my successes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's got a brilliant. All right. Uh, we got to get right into it because uh, 
Mm-hmm. What was it last week or week before last that we finally had some Ryzen powered laptops show up? So like yeah. Weeks. With Linux. Yeah, it was week yeah. before last and it mm-hmm. was Tuxedo Computers. Yep. And mm-hmm. wouldn't you know it, they're back. Uh, this time it's not a monster desktop replacement that you can put a 3950X into. This, this is a laptop. It's got a 91 uh, watt hour battery and it comes with a Ryzen 5 3500U. Which is a quad core, eight threads, um, three point something base clock. It is a very respectable laptop. It's also, you know, very slim as compared to the <laughs> the uh, <laughs> AX fifteen uh, from two weeks ago, which was a chunky yes. boy. This th- this one's a uh, slim and light, and it's uh, yeah that it is a proper Ryzen laptop. I don't know with man. Linux. Let's see, <laughs> I'm looking at this and it's got full size USB ports, man. That's so like yeah, yep. uh-huh. 2018. <laughs> man. This, this certainly this just have like a USB C port on it and some adapters. <laughs> the, 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 it doesn't have a half eaten apple on the back yet, but <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the, they know their target audience and their target audience are Linux people, and yeah. They even a full size um, Ethernet. <laughs> I okay. I, I I fully understand the everyone wants to live that dream. First thing to break. <laughs> to be fair, <clears throat> they haven't broken on the two laptops that I have that have those flippy bits. <laughs> you will. I very much the PCM. I C I A whatever it was uh, cards back in the day I had to use for Ethernet connections. Lost track of how many times I've walked away with the um, Ethernoodle plugged into that and just <laughs> ripped out. <laughs> it it Ooh. seems more self inflicted. I'm just saying yeah. that's what's going to happen. It's the same thing with the headphones. <laughs> how many times have you gotten up with your headphones plugged in? Uh, usually. I only use these if I know I'm going to be stationary for a while because mm-hmm. I've started using the cable mm-hmm. is extra. <laughs> these. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bluetooth. Blue Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to give you a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> What's this going to run me, Pedro? Uh, the uh, base model uh, starts at 899 euros, which is, you know, about half the price of the base model uh, from the other one. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, this is, um... oh, 859. All right. That was off. Uh, yeah. And it, yeah, it is basically half the price of the previous model that we talked about. And yeah, it is a laptop. 15 watt TDP yeah. processor, um, 8 gigs of RAM from the base config, 1080p panel. It is an entry level Ryzen laptop that runs Linux out of the box. That's good. With very you get good the battery life. With it. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think you'd be able to get away with it for Pedro? Like, you could do more than just your standard light browsing or anything like that, right? Yeah. No, uh, the, oh, the, yeah. this yeah. has uh, Vega 8. Okay. So yeah, it's you not, do... you know. A desktop APU level, uh, but it will do plenty of gaming at 1080p on the lowest settings or 720p on medium or high settings easily any day. Yeah, <laughs> and you can do video editing and animation on it too. Because it's a Ryzen. <laughs> you could. Um, I yeah. wouldn't recommend it. It's only a quad core. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you still could. You still could. It'd be good. Good little portable computer for. I, I could ride a tricycle on the um, interstate, <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's meant for web Two browsing years of warranty and productivity. Included in the price. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. If you want it out of the box and you're like, hey, man, why don't I hear about these? In the States, uh, not really. I mean, it's an option, but you'd really have to go to your way for it. But our brothers and sisters in the U- <laughs> European Union and European Union adjacent areas. Yes. yes. Europe. Yeah. We, we, we have to start using Europe again. There we go. <laughs> That's the thing. Hey, <laughs> Lenovo, they've done another good. They did. did they? This is incredible. About, 
<laughs> we talked about um, how Lenovo was going to start uh, shipping some of their ThinkPad models with Fedora a while back. But apparently, it's not just Fedora, because they're having Dell's cake and eating it too. They yes. are uh, going to be bringing uh, Red Hat and Ubuntu to their uh, ThinkPad P series, and also the ThinkStations. Think your Optiplexes, but the Lenovo variant. And yeah, they, that's what it they looks will like have when the you option. Run Linux. Mm -hmm. And like that's that. Unity. That's Unity there. <laughs> on the screen. It could be GNOME because it looks the it, exact same. Uh, <laughs> the... <laughs> it's actually Unity, yeah, it's I found out. Pretty nice. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh. Um, one of the things I'm looking at with this, uh, that's going to be a lot more options, you know? You know like, hey, because if you're at work, if you get to go through a purchasing manager, you could probably get a Lenovo too. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, now you have a Dell, now you have a Lenovo, and I'm definitely down yeah. with that. And they're going to have the options for preloaded Fedora images. Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't want to be on the sport end for that. <laughs> um, Let's be honest. I'd yeah. rather support Fedora than Windows 10. <laughs> Yeah, if, in in the right hands, yes, and I could say that for right. either. <laughs> <laughs> and so, had... I'm just saying that's the other alternative. <laughs> Aww. So, and to me, this was such you know, it's such a huge deal. Not only because it's not just one or two models of laptops or computers, but all their workstations, all the, all the Lenovo uh, laptop and computer workstations, and it. This is just going to, this is so huge also because it means more adoption of Linux on the laptop, but um, I, I, Linux on the desktop, I mean, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, but what's really cool is Lenovo, you know, they know their audience. They know there's more being done in AI and cloud and animation. They, you know, talked about animation and graphics as well. Are, are there other customers that are using Linux? So this just, it makes sense. And, you know, in April, when we talked about Lenovo having Fedora pre-installed pre and supported on their laptops, Lenovo, they had hinted at more Linux distributions coming to their computers. So now it's here, and it was pretty quick, too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Very good. Very like good. That. Um, that is just going to make it so much easier, because when, when I think about this, I think about my people working for larger companies that, you know, that... They're not going to be able to get a System76. They might not have Dell. Or just the poor person stuck there. They're like, hey, man, I can mm -hmm. get a box now that sports Linux. You can buy it. So let's get exactly. that. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shaky Patreon. <laughs> and Dell needs, uh, Dell needs to bring back the Ryzen um, mm. APUs to their Latitude line because the 5495 has been discontinued now. They're not making new ones. So, more Ryzen, please, Dell. I don't know, man. I mean, not to get on the aside, but I, 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 it's going to get laughable in a minute with Intel. Like, like don't do AMDs. Please don't. Right. Please don't. Right. <laughs> we'll cut the prices in half for you to get the chips. Just please don't. Yeah. yeah. Some bizarre <laughs> options of like, why is that still a thing? They're like, oh, we don't get yeah. sell the right. Yeah, you're going to have to start selling Ryzen. Like it or not, we got a new version of Linux, though. 5.7's on. What's new? Yes. So last <laughs> Sunday, Linux kernel 5.7 was released, and it includes lots and lots of important updates. Yeah, and as we have talked about, been talking about uh, here on LWW, the new XFAT driver from Samsung, Samsung is included in this release. And this more modern XFAT driver replaces the existing Microsoft one, which was older. And 5.7 also introduces thermal pressure checking to the task scheduler, which improves performance when CPUs are overheating. And another big one that a lot of people have seemed to overlook is that ACPI support for USB interface devices. That there is a ACPI support for USB, so you can now perform power management and monitor the status of USB devices on Linux, which is huge. Without which, without using a third-party program, it's just going to be built into the kernel, and hmm. that's yeah. You that's could already really do it, awesome. but you'd need a yeah other yeah. things. <laughs> other things. Yeah. <laughs> what about on the graphics side? Did you see anything in there, uh, Pedro, that was uh, like AMD 
You think rocking and rolling with that? I didn't. Mm -hmm. But then again, I didn't look for it. Uh, what I did see was actually, it's not included with 5.7, but it was a patch submitted uh, to the kernel that is going to be implementing a um, security feature similar to what Windows already does. Did and... you see the one that Linus, like, kicked off? <laughs> yeah, no, that one got immediately keel-hauled, like, old Linus style. I who put it on Discord. Doing... Okay, <laughs> who, who was doing that? I forgot the company. That, that was submitted. AWS. Uh, oh, that was, that yeah. was on oh, web yeah. services. They were just yeah. like, they yo, submitted... hey, could you put this thing in there that just like, yeah. uh, cuts all they the mitigations They submitted a patch off? to um, help with the level one cache snooping uh mm. on intel processors and linus is like first that's completely useless if you have a hyper threading enabled it literally does nothing second it's stupid because if people are going to be um snooping they can snoop before you do declare because their patch all it did was allow applications to opt in to clear the level one cache mm. as they exited and linus is like mm. You're not introducing that into the kernel. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on, Linus. Little, little, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, there was also support. There's also support now for Intel Tiger Lake graphics, which is uh, really, actually really cool, uh, generation 12. And the mainline kernel now supports the Pine Tab, Pine Phone, and Pine Book Pro. <laughs> Those are the ones I saw. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty neat, man. On the audio side, no big changes, uh, nothing to look forward to or be afraid of. I mean, everything should mm -hmm. just work. So, yes, that's good. Good news. And all the fun stuff. What do we have next? Oh, okay. I know we got them next. <laughs> Which we don't talk about very often. <laughs> Everyone, <they> yes. <laughs> Everyone loves men. It's great. It, yeah. It was perfect. It was wonderful. It was the poster child of... This is the cool Linux to install. Yeah, I know. The kids are like, but, but Arch, Arch. This, this was the Arch of its day. It's what all the it kids was. installed. Yes. Everyone had it. Uh, this is just an update of some of the new stuff that they have going on in the latest version. But I guess we need to go right back to the one that got to drew some yes. attention. <laughs> yeah. It did. The internet was like, wait a minute. What? So, to quote, we've also heard your queries on the topic of SnapD. This is a topic which is important to us, and we've already explained our position last year. Um, yeah, they got a duck on it. A 24 package based Chromium. Yeah, remember that. So, mm -hmm. with Ubuntu now, if you install Chromium, it's going to go. Ah, yeah, I saw you talk, uh, typed in apt. Uh, here's a snap, though. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's just the thing. Now, you know what? That's the thing. Uh, but. I don't like surprises. I, I especially don't like something installed with a different package manager. And apparently they didn't either. So they're going to just disable that, man. Um, like previous Mint releases, they will not ship with any snaps or SnapD installed. Second, to address mm. the situation, we'll do exactly what we said we would. What did they say they would do? Chromium won't be an empty package, which installs SnapD. Behind your back, it will be an empty package. Haha, -ha, deal with it, which tells you. Hey, I'm in the <laughs> package. Deal with it. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I know Alan had a blog post last year that laid their case out. I'm like, this is why we're doing Chrome. Mm -hmm. It's going to be easier to maintain with SnapD. I'm like, all right, I get that. But calculator? <laughs> <laughs> calculator. System, uh, system monitor. Monitor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know exactly where it was at, but... Uh, they do have a just straight Debian version of Mint, but it's a little bit out of date. So, I a bit. I, that was my first thought: is that, <laughs> do they still have their Debian spin? Why don't you just bump that up, R run it straight from the veins, man? Nah. Get, get some of that Debian life because hey, man, everything's cooler on Debian. Ha ha! Take my word; I'm not biased. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit biased, yeah but no not too much the chromium browser deb uh being literally just a meta package that installs snap and then uh snap mm -hmm. installs the chromium browser yeah it's not cool i no. had mentioned that in the uh on this very show before and uh canonical 
you and I, we need to have a bit of a talk because <laughs> chances are you remember what happened with the Unity desktop environment. You remember what happened with Upstart and you certainly remember what happened with Mir. And what those three have in common with Snaps is that you were forcing them down everyone's throats. That doesn't go well. Ever. It never has, and it mm -hmm. at the rate that you're doing it right now, it never will. Just stop. <laughs> yeah, what are you, and... the desperate industry whisper? <laughs> you're like, ah. Oh. No, I'm the Summer Glow of Linux. I Here, this, this, is, this is exactly <laughs> what I will come back and throw back, because this is one area that, you know, I have my problems, but I, I, I can irritate both sides. Watch this. Um, <laughs> I get it, because I've always said with Canonical, you need companies that will try things like the phone. You'll need things that will try things like Mir. And, and you know what? They might crash and burn, but you need those moonshot projects because you never know. Because the industry, the open source, the community, the ecosystems, we're very happy with good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't innovate. I'm saying don't force it down people's throats. That's my yeah, argument here, options. because forcing Unity down people's throats has you now having your default distro with GNOME. Forcing Upstart down people's throats now made System D the default in every distro in their dog. You're forcing Mir down people's throats, not Patrick, but um, Let's be it honest. made Let's... X still be the dominant display server. Mir, yeah. I honestly think this... <laughs> here I am. Um, I'm going to say Mir was developed uh, when Mir got dropped because, like, you know what? We, we don't need a mobile <laughs> display manager now because we're not doing the phone. Yeah, the synergy. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I'm, I'm not really thrilled either about uh, running Chromium as a snap because um, I, I used to use it here on, on uh, LWW for doing WebRTC and, and stopped ever since the, the update. But I understand the reasons behind it. And I do because it's easy to update, but hiding it behind a dot deb yeah, is a little, mm. little not. Yeah, not it's cool. easy to update, but you <laughs> yeah. can't lock it down to a specific <laughs> version if you need that specific yeah. version because it does something. You can't. Listen, auto yeah. updates are the future. You shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up and update. Oh, the yeah. Microsoft Metality. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. A couple other mentions though with the Linux Mint Twenty, they've done some work with the Nvidia Prime business, so the. Another attempt at making that work correctly. One day. Um, one day. One day, one day that poster will be irrelevant, Ben. One day. <laughs> he's, he's, he's saying NVIDIA's... <laughs> you're saying NVIDIA's number one, right? Yeah. Uh... Yes. <laughs> That's what that finger means. That's what it is, man. Like people misconstrue the yeah. heartfelt love Linus has. But... I have one last thing to add about Mint is okay. it, I've questioned mm -hmm. what Mint is good for on this very show before. Mm -hmm. There it is. They're not bending to, they're not bending the knee and adopting snaps. Very good. I think snaps are <laughs> definitely going to have their future um, with Ubuntu server because that's the one place server. you can sell me on containerization. When you get to desktop apps, maybe we need something different. Um, yeah. But then again, the whole idea of having a snap so you can have a store. Stores only work in closed ecosystems. Even Microsoft can be like, hey, we got a Microsoft store like Apple. And they're like, yeah, but we got other options. Apple's like, you know what? You don't on ours. So there's where your <laughs> store works. And that's the only environment <laughs> that's going to happen. Um, Linux Lite, what's this? Oh, this is really cool. This is one of my favorite light Linux distros. Just got a major release, um, 5.0. And I'm, I was really happy it supports high DPI settings in the settings menu now. And uh, the light welcome screen and light user manager now up, are updated to GTK3 and Python 3. And Chrome replaces Chromium in the light software center. And I'm sure for reasons that we just talked about. <laughs> because <laughs> because they don't like the the ubuntu telemetry either in their distro and they just want want a, a a clean ubuntu uh that doesn't uh oh it doesn't uh 
you know, give back to Ubuntu in terms of, yeah. uh, and you know, security. They say, <laughs> they say it's hidden, but it's not. Yeah. Because if you've installed Ubuntu, that's like the first thing you see. It's like, would you like to do yeah. a canonical about yes. your uh, things? Yes. And yeah, most of the time I say yes, because yeah, it's fine. I've gone through so many laptops, so they have so much information for me. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, new version of Linux Lite, though, uh, they uh, the whisker menu is now on on the latest version, which means it has mm -hmm. proper GTK3 support and it actually integrates very, very well. They're they're using the adapter theme for those screenshots. Oh, and look, a that... screensaver, no. because that's something that's still used in 2020. <laughs> that's what I was going to bring oh, up. Oh, like, it's the XFCE screensaver. screensaver. <laughs> it's in the integrated XFCE your argument. <laughs> well, Jill, most of us don't like... <laughs> burning electricity and destroying the Aww. environment as much as you do, so we power our yeah. monitors off when they're not in use. <sighs> I turned my whole computer off when it's, you know, when I go out of the house. Here's a side <laughs> talk. Um, I'd be interested. Anybody's, where are we at on suspend? Uh, I've grown up with Linux mm. since I was a teenager. I, I'm an old man who should have gray hair, but I can't get any. This irritates me. Um, <laughs> he needs some of mine. Yeah, right. Uh, or I could borrow some from Steve. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, he has true gray hair. Mine's blonde. on um, <laughs> laptops or desktops is was just atrociously bad on Linux for the longest time, to the point where I just, to this day, I don't trust it. I know intellectually mm. it should work. Yeah. Actually, footnote, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, don't put your computer to sleep. Uh, yes. Be it a laptop, be it a desktop, just don't. Mm -hmm. That's where the problems arise. <laughs> if you yeah. have uh, an Intel or even an AMD laptop, that's fine. Just close the lid, let it go to sleep. It's worked flawlessly for the past three years on most of the laptops I have, at least with the mainstream distros. It, if you're mm -hmm. using Joe's favorite Linux of... 2012 that hasn't been updated for that long and it might have issues <laughs> i think the other issue that i've never really went back to because we have ssds and if you don't want to be bothered by the slowness of your ssd yeah. you just put it on your nvme then they genuinely think about it i mean you can go to a cold boot on your box yeah. probably I, i'm gonna say i'd put money on it than any desktop from 10 years ago Oh, yeah. Faster than you oh, come yeah. out of hibernation. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wake up and that was still yeah. faster than coming up from a cold boot. Mm -hmm. but... No, a hibernation, yeah. it had one use mm -hmm. and it was for laptops. Say you're running mm -hmm. out of battery, but you don't want to shut down and you've basically had the system set to hibernate if the battery is already critically low. Yeah, that makes sense because it saves everything to... The non-volatile storage the device, disc. be it a hard yeah. drive or an SSD. Yeah, the good days. That's why you always RPM did it laptop drive. What is it doing? Just at leave least ten percent battery. <laughs> Don't look at it. <laughs> Just let it, let it do its thing. All right. Do we have anything yeah, else no, for the next it's one use. Before we get out to the next story, I'll take that yeah. as a no. Let's talk about yeah, that remarkable it. micro SDs. What's this? This is mad hattery is what <laughs> yes. when you start off with how I added a micro SD card to my remarkable tablet. Yeah, that's right. When, when dude didn't want to burn out his EMMC. So it was like, you know what? I'm just going to solder an SD card onto this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start scraping away solder mask and all this fun stuff. This is just a fun walkthrough. This is like um, just a little bit of extra because I've always wanted to look at that. Eh, all right. I'm not going to be that guy because I don't post my pictures online for my <laughs> solder jobs. I don't, I, I'm not brave enough, so I'm not going to talk smack. <laughs> Dremel that in there. Aww. I firmly say that there has been a market for the longest time for tablet, you know, 10 inch, mm -hmm. eight inch device. That was just e-paper that yes. gave me a decent browsing experience. I don't need to watch video, but I need something that's going to have standby of till the end times. And <laughs> well, there's never really been anything until now. 
because this is why we're talking about it. He has shoehorned <laughs> the Linux on it. Yes. This is the tablet. No, we still haven't used the style. And it, 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 it's operating. It's operating just like you would expect ePaper 2, which is fine. That's kind of what I'm looking for. But mm -hmm. this thing can even run GNOME, which is impressive on its own. So it's got mm -hmm. a little bit of horsepower behind it, little tidy keyboard. I would like to see something like Android on an e-paper device, but I would definitely like to play around mm -hmm. with this, man. Uh, what's the catch? Well, Jill, you say A, yeah. they're a little pricey. And B, yeah. there's also, well, I guess you could run this on the internal storage if you wanted, but well, best case scenario, you'd have to get a little stabby with your uh, soldering iron, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well... The remarkable one when it was launched in 2017 was $599. <laughs> and e-paper devices, of course, were supposed to be cheaper. But this is a big one, and you could also draw on it and write on it. So that that's one of the differences between, you know, uh, that and the Amazon uh, Kindle offerings. But now you can get the remarkable one for just $299, which it's finally coming down, <laughs> down to a reasonable price. You can pick one up and put Linux on it. And I, I was also on their website, and they have a new version called the Remarkable 2, which is available for pre-order at just $3.99. So for the new one, that's even thinner and even faster. So that's yeah. really cool. I've always been wanting one of these. And I used to, you know, I used to hack my my Amazon Kindles to play video with M Player and, and do all the fun things and, and, and used it as a music player. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> yeah, the but Kindles awesome. are definitely neat. I mean, I would like to see something <laughs> like my old Nexus 10, which this is what you, yes, this is what you do now. You sit on the desk here in the studio and you operate <laughs> lights. Ha. <laughs> um, but the reason that I had so much use out of that tablet is because it had a 9,000 milliamp battery. Battery. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's the beauty. Genuinely, a tablet that I could carry, which my use case for a day or two without not having to charge it. I would like something like that with e paper on it. So, like an, an emergency communications, you know, something that I could put in my go bag. Yeah, it lasts months, you know, the battery on it. And sometimes even up to a year That'd if you great. take yeah. care of it. <laughs> yeah. Play around with that. Um, this is just wrong, Pedro. I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> no, I love this. <laughs> wrong doesn't even begin to describe it. This yes. is snakeware. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, it's a free Linux distro with a Python user space inspired by the Commodore 64. And you're wondering, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Uh, what it does is you boot directly into a Python interpreter that you can use to literally render anything on screen. And if you're thinking, so is it just using X like regular Linux to render to Windows? No. It's drawing them directly to the frame buffer with Python for fun and... What's that smell? Oh yeah, that's my <laughs> graphics card because I forgot to include a line in my Python script and now it's refreshing the window about as many times a second as the processor can handle it. So my GPU is burning, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, they also mentioned that uh, they are looking for more um, software but and getting pong, people- Pedro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're Hi. trying to get more people to uh, use it and develop stuff for it and actually get, you know, games and other things working on it. Um, and I am I started to, like, pause it. It's like, okay, so how are you going to do games? Because you're not running X. You're writing directly to the frame buffer. But most games require X. Mm -hmm. So are you using Zephyr to run just a teeny tiny little window of X to run the game in? But... Oh, Zephyr doesn't have you need any to think Python out of the box it. because so, I, I, yeah. I, I, I want to be here to introduce <laughs> um, the S Wayland um, Python bridge, so you'll be able to use your Python powered um, nonsense on. Wait, I don't know. It's going to work just as well. As like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as soon as you mentioned Wayland, I'm like, okay, it might be feasible. See, that's this, how much I know this of is, it. This is kind of the problem. <laughs> Again, you mentioned Wayland, like, yeah, probably somebody's working on that. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I think this is actually brilliant. Um, just like we all thought this was amazing and had to cover it. And, you no, know, since Python, yeah. And since Python is one of the easiest languages to learn <laughs> and great for beginners and advanced users alike, the distro is simple, very simple to contribute to. And there have been other frame buffer window systems. One I had played around with was called Winnie, released in 2013, but it's not currently active. But that was just, you know, I've always been fascinated by the capabilities of the frame buffer and have spent many, many hours watching end player videos uh, in it. So that, you know, when I was uh, first started using Linux and then uh, realized there's another option to X where you could, you know, uh, play videos and do graphics in. <laughs> Which is to <laughs> code directly into your frame buffer. Uh, yeah. I don't trust my own um, programming ability, be it with Python or literally any language whatsoever, <laughs> to have that kind of access. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, you get, gotta get off the old people's lawns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, gosh, if you had you something like the Commodore that you were drawing directly to the uh, the frame mm -hmm. buffer, because you know the CPU was so weak that it could barely do anything as it was, yeah, this yeah. is a fun little right. project in the sense that you're like, all right, that's neat. It's not practical. It'll never grow in any adoption, but still neat. I like it. Yeah. Just awesome. <laughs> fun. It's been a minute since uh, a minute. I think we went an uh, entire week without breaking out. The Microsoft uh -oh. <laughs> loves Linux. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> totally do, man. Um, if I can. Hey, it did think. Embrace and kill. This comes from the register, <laughs> like everything. Um, well, everything's going to be takes. in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> App get dab claims Microsoft reeled him in with talk of help. And a job. Then released remarkably similar package manager. Uh, I don't know. The, what do you think? Big boots or tiny human? Or you on yes. That? Okay. Uh, big boots. <laughs> Could be a thing. So this basically boils down. Um, Microsoft reached out to the developer of AppGet. And they're like, yo, we'd, we'd like you to come have a talk with us and talk about some things. What are you planning in the future? Maybe there were some mentions of like, uh, you know, be able to like maybe think about I would just come in for an interview or something like that. All right, that was done. Then, dude, never heard back from Microsoft. You know, a couple of months later, then Microsoft's like, "Yo, we have this thing." It, now it's written in a different <laughs> we have language. This new package manager. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. So the. Dude fell, then maybe rightfully so. And he was like, hey, man, I, I thought we were talking about, you know, maybe like funding development of that Git. And Microsoft went radio silent on him. So what are your takes on that? Let's start with Joe. Yeah. Well, I think Microsoft got caught using bad open source business practices, <laughs> obviously. And, you know, he they need to give um, Kevin Beji credit where credit is due. And... They did a rebuttal in saying that they are going to give him credit. And, uh, you know, his his software was once again called App Get, not Apt Get <laughs> from, from Debian, but App Get. And, you know, I actually do understand why the name is WinGet and not Microsoft App Get, because that sounds too much like Apt Get from Debian. <laughs> so, but, but yeah. You know, Kivan, um, he had, he was supposed to get hired, um, supposedly going to get hired, and then they end up using a lot of his code in Winget and not giving him credit. And th that just uh, is not Jill, cool. No. Apparently, they didn't use any of his code. Not a bit. They just poked him for ideas uh, because, thanks to uh, Pennywise oh. uh, for posting the second bit in the Discord, which was uh, AppGet really helped us, Microsoft says, but That's offers right. no yeah. apology for killing Open Source Package Manager. And um, the developer said, uh, the, the Microsoft developer said, it's like, we're not using any of his code because we didn't see any of his, uh, any of his code. We uh, just asked him in 
because we were trying to uh, get some ideas for the thing. And then the whole uh, hiring bit was kind of not mentioned in their non-apology. And um, yeah, a couple of months later, there's a new thing that works very similarly, but again, not reusing any of the code as far as Microsoft goes, uh, or as far as they say. Yeah, anyway. it was a different version of C is what it was. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. the basically the developer is like, oh, so what the hell do I do now? <laughs> well, <laughs> there was really nothing to be done when you think about it, man, because worst case, worst case, what we might actually be dealing with is, you know, Microsoft brought the dude in, pick his brain, you know, under the guise of like, hey, we might be able to fund some of your work or we might even give you a job. Best case, you know, Microsoft did bring the guy in, which they didn't like, hey, and he's like, yeah, I went through some interviews and he went mm -hmm. through some interviews and always the interview, he's like, I did great, but it could have very well been IRL. Like, yeah, no, <laughs> um, after the interview, I don't say that to be mean, you know, I know nobody wants to hear that, you know, but I've been on the hiring end and I've had to go, mm -hmm. love your work, great project, uh-uh, that, you know, now, unfortunately, that can be a thing. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm going to be brave and go out on a limb and say, could have been a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, the two are <laughs> most certainly yeah. not mutually exclusive. But I, I'm just saying, man, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a little bit of free advice, though. Like, if any company, I probably get this at least twice a year, uh, they reach out to you, they hunt you down because, okay, hey, we found you're doing a show now. Okay, that's like, they want to do like a multi hour like conference of any type it's called consulting kids and you charge them for it mm -hmm. you charge them for it hard because once they're done having their you know um brainstorming set, poof they're gone they're not gonna hire you they're not gonna give you money charge them up front and say this is what it costs an hour and if they can swallow that then do it might have been a hard lesson learned for a friend too <laughs> yeah no if uh, that turns out to be the case and i really do hope because he closed on the project and uh app get is no longer being actively developed uh and he's going like well you were developing a package manager for windows mm. it's microsoft you're dealing with mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're dealing with parts of Microsoft, and that 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 is a mm -hmm. nightmare in itself. Because there's genuinely parts of Microsoft that are trying to move forward, but there's still yes. the old guard, very much mm -hmm. there. So, and a lot of those are probably still in HR and stuff like that in the interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey everyone, uh, if you like what we do, you want to support us, you can come over to LinuxGameCast.com. Tap that support button, fam. Or maybe just share the show on like Twitter or Facebook and all that. We got Wishlist. We got Libra Pay. Patreon. That's where the super awesome people kick us a few bucks each week. It's kind of brilliant. Helping us out. We throw some things back in your direction. Access to the pre-show, show notes. Uh, what else we got? Patreon. Do we get anything fun? Well, besides having access to our Discord and getting preferential treatment, yes, because we judge you. <laughs> How dare you, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you trying to say that if people are financially making this show possible, they get preferential treatment? Yes, mm -hmm. they do. Yes. They can uh, come join us to play video games. Oh. Uh, usually, Ven and Jordan on um, Thursdays and Fridays will do multiplayer games. So you get uh, preferential treatment if you'd like to join us. Will, will you, you say nice things if you're a about Patreon. me? <laughs> I, I need you to say like three nice things about me then. Ven <laughs> is uh... see. He will do the same for you. He will sit up and like try to make up some things. <laughs> we treat everyone the same man uh to that credit we have a uh, discord for patrons but it's bridge to irc which has always been free always will be free and that's what we're using right now for live it's also tied into twitch so it's kind of brilliant everybody can get together but we do have a little bit of a wish zone thing where people are like yo we want to help you out do some things mm -hmm. sometimes they're constructive we're picking up stuff on amazon then there's this. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the uh, cage there, but there's, there's cage. also <laughs> yoga pants that you can't really see, but yeah, no, they're yoga pants. <laughs> and <laughs> we, I need to thank Aldius for that. I did ask him if he had included a note because the note didn't make it, mm -hmm. but uh, he didn't include a note. He just included two pairs, one of which is right here in my hand, and the other pair. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Yay, Pedro! <laughs> I am wearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of frightening. You're putting that together. Like, oh God, I know where the other like pair I is. Said, yeah. Like I said, it's very dark back there, and these are black yoga pants. Uh -huh. So, um, thank you, Aldius. These are actually very comfy. So, like, <laughs> nice. real talk has like Nori been like, "Those are mine, by the way." <laughs> She uh, claimed dibs on one of the pairs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> sure I... It's like, oh, one of those is mine. <laughs> I, I will put the name up on the board. We do have um, the fine upstanding cannibals. Well, uh, for Aldius, because something did yeah. show up over here, um, which I went and picked up yesterday evening. It was a new APC nice. for the audio rack which is something I've always wanted to put in there, um, which brings us up to one, two, three, four, five here in the studio. <laughs> which, it, I know it's really boring. So that's, that's all the stuff on the studio list. It's terribly boring stuff, but you think about it when the show continues and we have a power outage and the stream doesn't go down mm -hmm. and we have to start everything back up again. Those have saved us. Not that the power goes out all the time, and I know it's kind of silly, but you'll get some joy knowing that I was crawling around on the floor installing a 1U on the bottom shelf of the rack with trying to get these meat mitts <laughs> under there, fortunately. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sore in very Aww. fascinating places today. Like, even, like, my right ankle was like, well, oh, I know what I was doing. I was bent like Yeah, that. I learned that the other day. My wrist is um, thicker than a 1U. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I could probably, like, get it in there. I, I can load... <laughs> Man, I installed thousands of pieces of rack gear in my life. Um, I can still load um, nut holders with my teeth with a screw. Because I was having to do some yoga of my own to get that situated. Aww. But it's in, it works, and Yay. it's within uh, spec. So we're only at like 73% load according to what is ever cyber power he uses for that moon number. I'm like, that's fascinating. Do you cut off when I overload you? Nope. All right, we're cool. Um, yeah, it's just a fun number they came up with, <laughs> <laughs> but that'll keep the audio stack on its own circuit breaker. And, uh, that's cool. Thank you for that. It was Yay. Aldeus. <laughs> awesome. Aldeus. <laughs> now we need to have a little bit of a, a spy. Spot. Yeah. Eight gigs. Yes, so the 8 gig Raspberry Pi is here. Exciting. We've all been talking about it and and wanting it. I looked for it on Amazon. It wasn't quite there as of yesterday. Uh, but it is it is here. So now you can get a 1, 2, 4 and 8 gig variant of the Raspberry Pi 4. And uh you know, last week we talked about how how you can now we now do need they, to address real they have quick, a kernel. The um <laughs> they had a little bit of a slip up way back when on the initial Oh, launch. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So they had <laughs> uh, a, a, while, a while ago, uh, someone had posted this. Uh, it was a uh, receipt. Oh, no. The, uh, no, no it post that. Comes that with is the, the safety pie. user guide that's included oh, with the with Raspberry the, Pi when you buy pie. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and that slip that there was a eight gig variant on there, yeah. So, but I there was also someone had a receipt with one on it as well. Uh, but is it uh, what's cool is the Raspberry Pi OS is no longer called Raspbian, but um, it is the Raspberry Pi OS. And the big news here really is that um, there is a thirty two gig, thirty two bit, and sixty four bit variant of the Raspberry Pi OS. To support more memory, which will really help out. And uh, there's actually a lot of new features also for Raspberry Pi OS this release. There is a new bookshelf bookshelf application for viewing the whole catalog of PDFs. 
from the Raspberry Pi Press, which produces their own free books and magazines, including the Magpie, which we talk a lot, a lot about here on LWW, for uh, free tutorials, uh, PDF tutorials and downloads. It has a new magnifier app for the visually impaired, which is custom made for the Raspberry Pi. So it works really nicely with the Pi. And when you launch Chromium on a new image, there is a short questionnaire on what users are doing with their Raspberry Pis. So that the and Raspberry Pi snap. Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not a snap. <laughs> and then, yes, exactly. It's Debian. That's pretty cool, man. They definitely walked out and they're like, yo, we were, we were going to always make these. We, the, the SOC for the, the memory, I'm not thinking about just the yeah. memory module, didn't exist at a price point that we could get it and make it make sense in a package. No, it does. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Pedro, what would you do with an 8 gig pie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, depending on what it can run, because uh, part of the software development also includes like um, a proper Vulkan driver for the uh, Broadcom graphics chip mm -hmm. that the Raspberry Pi uses, which is nice. It's very nice. And once that is in there... PlayStation 2 emulation? Uh, yeah. Actually getting a proper emulator box that basically plays everything from the PlayStation 2 slash Nintendo 64 slash, you know, like the more demanding consoles that era back. It's getting there. Yes, I'm please. definitely sitting back and we're talking <laughs> in the British show, man. I'm looking for like the next mm -hmm. SOC revision to see what they come up with because I, I, I want something powerful enough to do the desktop stuff, but also WebRTC and have enough ports yes. on it and expandability. Yeah. But keeping it in that, you know, hundred dollar package. If you give me something <laughs> like that, then basically I want budget nooks that I could just tape and get some of my floor space back in here. That'd be a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, if you want to tell us about your perplexing pie prowess, how can they do that? <laughs> well, you can send us all of your alliterations to linuxgamecast.com um, forward slash contact or just hit the contact button on the nav bar. And LWDW is the show that you need to select to send some feedback to this uh, teeny tiny little uh, bit of news that we do in the middle of the week. And that's the first letter of my um, name. <laughs> one, 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 one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it, that is the best way that you can get in touch with us because guaranteed someone will see that if you do. Most likely then. And uh, the other best way is if you're a Patreon, you can also leave us a comment there. That works. YouTube comments probably will see it. Maybe. I'll tell you what, Twitter, if you leave if a you YouTube comment, Twitter. if you leave a YouTube comment, <laughs> Pedro will read it. But he will uh, never, <laughs> he will never <laughs> reply to it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll read them. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. If you call Pedro wrong on YouTube, I'm not encouraging this. I'm totally encouraging this. We'll get back to you. Like, you wouldn't yeah. be the first one or the last one. No. But yeah. He loves it. He's like, oh, I get to go have an internet fight. And it's pretty fun to watch. It's great. <laughs> oh, come on. I did a responsible argument thingy on Twitter this week. I... It was about uh, the Proton discussion that we had on uh, LGC Weekly. Uh -huh. And I offered a reasoned and well structured counter argument to uh, what someone was saying. And then uh, he uh, went quiet. Then Jordan defended that person because they were sharing the same opinion. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to leave it there. So I was responsible mm -hmm. this way. What, what I'm How saying you? is you, you better get a couple of bites <laughs> because he's getting to the age where you no longer want to. I, list me. I, I've been through it. Like I used to argue on the internet too, but after a certain age, you're like, yeah. or you don't, and you become one of those <laughs> yeah. people. <laughs> I, I got you know what I, I'm going to not go argue on the internet and uh, so get them get while there's still time is what I'm saying go pick those arguments with me he, he can't completely help himself 100% that, I do have my buttons you just have to find yeah. them <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we're thank you for watching this live or after the fact uh, come check us out we're going to roll the credits maybe yeah. a little music maybe yes Yeah. yeah, and that was a Unity stock, uh, Unity stock.
The only way that you can tell that that is Unity, well, there are two ways you can tell that that was Unity. It was the little folder thingy on the desktop and the Ubuntu icon on the top of the left side dock bar thingy. That's it. And you can easily replicate those in the so. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you just to saying, our beautiful... I saw that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Created by us. <laughs> <laughs> How was that Not for Brad. arguing, Ben? <laughs> well, well yeah. listen, man, putting Brad is better than having my name in the credits twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>Sorry, Joel. <laughs> that, that's okay. That that's was okay. I didn't know just you just about had seen... the uh, argument <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That was what were we talking really? about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really it. That blew up on Twitter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's like, why did they take a screenshot of what it, what was that? 1204? Yeah. 1404? Yeah. Something like that? That uh, if you scooch back that way a little bit there. See that top icon on the left bar? I have that no idea the... what Unity I've used it yeah. once and I <laughs> recoiled in terror. <laughs> I couldn't tell you that the is one of the indications and on the laptop oh. screen uh, there's actually like the folder on the desktop see mm -hmm. there that that's very unity yeah uh, or KD <laughs> <either or>. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny because on the other articles um, about the Lenovo laptops um, everyone was using a correct newer gnome it's just you know, a miserable uh, Photoshop desktop, on but... top of everything else. Yeah, yeah. no, y you can tell it's like the monitors yeah. are slightly out of focus, but the yeah, screens the are is... sharp. Yeah. Well, that's also one of the issues. Like, you need to do some anti-lacing when you redo. Like, you can... <laughs> and we need you need to normalize because even if it's not a reflective screen, <laughs> even if it's like got a matte finish, it sort of if you take a picture everything inherits the same dominant color in whatever so if you're not color normalizing it's going yeah. to look off <laughs> i just realized like the last frame in this twin tax it's like hey plug it in removal fist bump <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's trying to tell you not to touch the um transceivers but it is straight up like bro fist. Nah. <laughs> so when you get done installing it, fist bump your twin tax kids. You can't fist bump. Social distancing. <laughs> That's why the protective bag is there, Pedro. <laughs> so you can fist bump without guilt. <laughs> ah. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's going to, yeah, it's fiber optic. Well, that's, this is twin tax. This is direct attached copper because if you're doing anything under nine meters, use direct attached copper. It's faster and it's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say faster, less latency. <laughs> it's the same speed. I mean, you're going to max out a 10 or 40. I really wish. Yes. It was 40. Same throughput. Yeah. <laughs> Lower latency. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've already bought the fiber. I got a spool of fibers cheap. It's just the transceivers. Then you get to play Russian roulette with, like, will this transceiver work <laughs> in the Switch? And what I have the card I'm plugging it into? Who knows? 
Fortunately, I have a decade experience doing that, and that hasn't changed much, so... I, <laughs> if you need somebody to set that up in your house, I can do it. Multi-mode. <laughs> Multi-mode. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't look at the ends, but I've also seen people in data centers go... <laughs> stick it right back into rack. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> 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 Get a nice, handy, easy to use tool that you can plug that in and see if there's any spots and sonically glued it. <laughs> Not okay, Bad. honestly, listen, I don't, I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't be caught dead doing it. If you're just sending like 10 gig around, that you can live with that, all right. Maybe. You're not going to be... Because 10 gigs tiny. That's a very, very small data byte. You're not going to be running into issues with microscopic dist. Mm. Not Skipic? Microsoft. Skipic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, if you have the light refraction skipping around, it'd be skipping. Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> Awfully skipping, that one. <laughs> Ah man, you see? Do you didn't see the fist or theory? And these are protons. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but they're safe. And that's. It's one good thing about ordering cables because you get a bunch of resealable um, anti-static bags. Cable matters. <laughs> Yeah, I have a bit of a stock of those because <laughs> every now and then I sell stuff on eBay. So <laughs> I have a stock right up to the point where I need a bag for something. <laughs> what I don't have a stock of um, are laptop boxes because... <laughs> Most of the uh, boxes, well, they're not boxes, uh, they're jiffy bags that come with extra um, air in them, or packaged air. <laughs> because all the laptops that I buy for cheap off eBay, they, they don't come in boxes, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I yeah, bubble wrap. That's <laughs> irritated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that acts on UPS. Because, packaged air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because I got the insurance when I sent off that Black Magic card. I said, Ara made that little grill. And, um, look, like, it's not packaged well enough. Like a $6,000 microphone came in this box. I think it might. I took it from work. <laughs> not the microphone, <laughs> just the packing box. It's going to get thrown away. Fun. Mm. That's one of the things. Um, I'm probably picking up. Have you found a reliable spot to get the uh, Golden Age microphone? eBay. That's it? That's the only place? That's it. So the, if, I, that, if I log on and find it at a different place at a better price in Britannia... If you find it in stock, I'd be surprised because I found a couple of listings outside of eBay mm -hmm. and out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. That seller has a very good rep, and he has stock, so... <laughs> What's he selling them for? Uh, 150. 150 oh, pounds. Oh, that's not bad. Yep. Pounds. That's like $210. Then pounds, 200. <laughs> so, uh, Van, it, yours was 230 was it, was, Am I correct? It this was one was almost there? 300 These were out of stock when they okay. were first launched. Oh, okay. But they weren't... The list price on these microphones have always been $150, but for the first seven months after Golden uh, Age released these, you couldn't buy them. Oh, joy. They were non-existent in the market, and the people that had them were sell. I mean, some people on eBay were getting away. Even on Amazon, they were $300-some dollars. I showed you. Yeah. And that's yeah, just what you had to pay for them. Yeah, this one was 400 and that was the, the lowest I could find. 
new. There were new used ones that were like a 350 when Steven was looking. Yeah, you can get a good deal. I mean, like I said, these are good mics if you're going to EQ them and if you are going to actually get a preamp mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. So, basically, if you're going to walk out and if you want something like a Shure SM7B that is genuinely half the price and it doesn't sound like it's underwater, <laughs> you know, it I still don't understand how Shure SM7s became <laughs> podcasting mics. I'm like, that is made to record metal cabinets. Yeah. It's a YouTuber control. special. It is a YouTuber it's special. It's like the Scarlet and the Stream Deck. And yes. and... <laughs> Everyone runs yeah. out. That That's the first thing I ask people. Go, oh, what's the issue with my sound? I was like, you got the little Scarlet interface? I'm like, yeah. Do you get your shirt plugged directly in there? Yeah. Like, um, okay. Max gain all the way to the right. <laughs> On that Scarlet's 45 dB, and that's all that preamp noise and static and crap like that. That microphone requires a minimum of 60. So, go ahead and map that out. Mm -hmm. That microphone I is... Think, uh, it was Jay's two cents, and he was talking about that microphone. It's like, oh, I have this interface. It's like, oh, you, you, you have the YouTuber special interface, all right? <laughs> I think he did a follow-up video to that. He was like, oh. He did. He did. It's like, oh, I finally figured out how to do this properly. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, he was used to putting computers together. It's like, but I put yes. the thing in the thing and it matched and I cut it on. It's like, eh. <laughs> I don't have any yeah, um, it's just... emulation. Mm. Oh, do I have any? No? Uh... Emulation. Not in a while. That's Ever the since old, I finished. Yeah. What was the uh, Nintendo DS Pokemans? Heart Gold? I think it was Heart Gold. That was the last one I played. <laughs> that was the last mm. emulated game I played. <laughs> Oh, Earth there, and I got the SpaceX mug again. It's been so exciting. How wonderful that that mission! They has finally been. launched them on Saturday. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it went beautifully without a hitch, easy peasy. It was it was great. They have so much room up there in their capsule. That was really cute. They did a, a tour of the capsule. <laughs> that was really that fun. even <laughs> on the uh, the stream that they were doing on. Wednesday, when they didn't launch, yeah. I saw them go in and sit down. It's like, oh, that's got two extra chairs and it's got a lot of extra room around them. That's yeah, that's amazing. That's fancy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what was neat during the tour is they they you know that was when they they got out of their uh, uh, spacesuits into their civilian clothes, and they were floating around under the chairs. <laughs> that was really cool. So you could see what was under them and the two windows that they look out of uh, underneath that are underneath their feet. Our Theron uh -huh. might be about a week and a half, two weeks from what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it, it, I literally just got the tracking number. It's like, oh, it just left uh, uh, Shenzhen. It's like, oh, of course they're based in Shenzhen. <laughs> like, all of the um, electronics uh, companies where they get their core uh, components. Chenjin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the Pine Phone is a very interesting tinker toy right now. It's yeah. Sailfish OS, Ubuntu Touch, um, Post Market OS. And all of the other ones, it's like, oh, everything works, does it? Yeah, Sandy is <laughs> supposed to be back, I think, on Thursday, so I can ask him about it. <laughs> Excited to find out. <laughs> yeah, Salty, there, uh, if you have 150 bucks to spend on a toy, 
the pine phone is a very good toy. <laughs> Just, yeah, get it with the right expectations. Yeah. Yes, it's a toy. <laughs> it's a prototype toy. <laughs> Let's dial those expectations back just a little <laughs> bit more. But yeah, I mean, Arthur, and you're gonna have so much fun. <laughs> when it ships, when's your uh, when is yours going to show up, Pedro? Uh, a week and a half, two weeks ish. <laughs> hey, there's a new um, software bundle. Does it have any Linux stuff this time? I don't know. I'm about to find out. There's like, um, <laughs> let's see. What do we have? No. Nope. No. 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 Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> Solid no on that Man. one. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's like whatever. A, a shampoo. shampoo. Ah. A shampoo. Wow, I haven't heard of that name since 1999. I had a laptop. Um, my first laptop. Dude. They, they got had an a shampoo um, bit of software in it. They have Canonical Beat, dude. They, they already have <laughs> oh, Stamp at 11 gosh. on theirs. Remember that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> CD burning software. You remember? Uh, yeah, that was a thing on Windows for a long time, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, sure was. Uh, it was a clone DVD, and finally, uh, e uh, IMG burn. Yeah, image release. burn. Yeah, <laughs> that one was like finally something sane that you know people can actually use. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And faster, too. <laughs> yeah. <fast. laughs> and they did something really neat, which okay. was if you hit a button to confirm something, mm -hmm. and it looked like it didn't do anything, you hit it again, a dialog window would show up. It's like, I heard you the first time. Mm. <laughs> it's like, well done. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I haven't That's heard weird. the term a shampoo in a long time. Wow. <laughs> uh... I didn't Nero come to Linux at some point? That oh yeah, right. I still have a Linux version. Still works on one of my old machines. The one that I used that also supported the uh, proprietary Nero uh, disk images was uh, yeah. Acetone ISO. Oh yeah, <laughs> Nero burning ROM. <laughs> <laughs> see if their website still works. Um... Double no, deal. You Ooh, got redirected. <laughs> <laughs> what are now? Platinum, seven in. More stuff. Yay. Uh, Nero, huh? RPM. Oh, it's even 32 bit. None of that fancy 64 bit stuff. Oh, never mind. No, there yeah, it is. It has 64. <laughs> and, it, and the devs are still there. It's still there. It's still available for sale. This is the latest version. I guess Nero is still a thing. I don't know. What was the, um, <laughs> trying to think of the first GUI I used to burn CDs. I know. I, I always used the uh, command line for years or moved over to XF burn and Katana Steel's project. I used clone <laughs> CD before it became clone DVD. <laughs> it was something like that. It might have been G combust. Yeah, G-Combust, yeah. Oh, that one had a nice sound when it finished. <laughs> and then uh, ADE one. Oh. I don't know, man. I assume you can just burden CDs now in Windows? Yes. You, If you have an ISO, you can right-click burn to disk. It still doesn't let you uh, burn to a uh, flash drive, but you can mount ISOs as well. You don't mm -hmm. no longer need like alcohol 120% or uh, demon tools oh, yeah. or demon. anything. <laughs> you can just right click mount. 
I like just being able to burn like disc writer. That used to be a chore under Linux is uh, making like uh, the boot uh, USB drive. I mean, making the DVDs and the CDs were always easy, but yeah, getting those things shoved onto a thumb drive back in the day. Now, actually writer. writing a proper boot. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, is this going to work? Hey, check it before you wreck it. hundred percent. Yes. Uh, now it just works, which is fun. Acetone ISO. Yep. Acetone, Acetone ISO. I still keep around for um, mm. like uh, multi-track CDs that I ripped back in the day, which um, they have a data track and then they have like audio tracks. Uh, those don't work. The ISO doesn't do that. So you end up with a queue and a bin. But if you need just to get the data track, you can use acetone ISO to just export the ISO from the Q bin. Last time I had to deal with the Q in a bin structure was when I had to do that severe roundabout hack with the original Tomb Raider from GOG. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Where I was like, how do I get the data files out of this GOG? And Google was like, shrug emoji. <laughs> That's why there's a video. It's like, well, I guess, hey, I need to figure out how to do this. And then Strider like jumped out. He's just like, but you should do it this way. It's like, go ahead and do it like that way, buddy. Of course I tried it. And he ended up with like this directory full of nonsense. <laughs> Plex server. Oh, man. My Plex server is like right up there with my Myth TV box. It's just, they, they're not on. <laughs> they're not. There's too much stuff to watch streaming that I don't watch. I, I don't need like the equivalent of like battery backup of more stuff that I just don't watch. There's nothing on really, man. I've been meaning to try to watch the new Penny Dreadful. Yeah. Rick and Morty. I, yeah. I haven't started on that yet. I started watching uh, Space Force on Netflix with Steve Carell. Space Force. What's that about? Oh. It's, um, well, it's about space force but um it's comedy it's completely off the rails at one point there's a monkey in space uh, attempting to fix a satellite it no it's a steve carell movie but breaking down into like 30 40 minute episodes okay it's funny right. it's actually funny <laughs> so i have to check that out i'll peruse it it's on netflix yes okay Oh, Salty, that's not a spoiler. The spoiler is what comes afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely off the rail. <laughs> I never watched The Office. Never have. I might, I don't know. I can't watch stuff like, um, what is the new thing now? Devs? Uh, yeah. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, I haven't watched that either. <laughs> See, I, I Google stuff just like, did I just misremember that? Ah, oh, it's TV series. Yay. I, I didn't have a senior moment. Check it out. Yeah. I guess there's an American Indian idea. suspense drama television show. <laughs> yeah. That's different than <laughs> the other one I was thinking of. TV show. There's devs, the one that... Oh, there's yeah. Dev and Devs. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is the right thing. Huh. Science fiction thriller miniseries. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Quantum computing. Yes, none of that non-quantum computing in our shows. Yeah. That's still new enough. I have another thing on my watch list. Um, Snowpiercer. I haven't seen that. N yeah, me neither. But it's on my watch list. <laughs> There's a series out for it, isn't there? Yep. Or one in the works, maybe? It's in uh, uh, season one's on Netflix. Okay. I think, I mean, Rick and Morty's over. That was the only thing I was remotely actively watching, and sometimes I'd be a week behind. But maybe Game of Thrones, not Game of Thrones, uh, not Game of Thrones. I mean, uh, Amazon's original series. No, no, no. The uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. The other not Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm looking forward to that. That'll be interesting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on Prime, um, 
Hunters. If you haven't seen it yet, absolutely worth a watch. What's it about? Um, bunch of uh, Jewish people uh, hunting Nazis hmm. in American soil. <laughs> it's shown me an ad for that. Thanks, Amazon. Mm -hmm. That's always fun for a paid service. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> on Amazon Prime. Yeah, no, uh, mm -hmm. Hunters was... Uh, I called it the thing that happens at the end, but it it was still a fun show to watch. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll go check that out. Eventually. See, that's the other problem with all this stuff. <laughs> Amazon original it's always gonna be on Amazon. I'm like, I don't want it. You're gonna be there when I have nothing to do. This is a rare thing in my life. Like, Unless hey. another Disney Plus happens. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Are there and Halt and Catch Fire is the one that I'm the next one I want to watch. That's awesome. That's the old IBM days. That's an interesting show for so the first cool. series. Then you go, what? They, wait, uh, they, it you changes. do the second series? Mm -hmm. That's when I kind of fell off. Um, mm. First one's all right. Okay. First series is uh, definitely worth it. It was surprising to watch. But the bar has been set extremely high with like The Walking Dead was kind of the start of it for TV series. That we saw getting a little more like, ooh, this is kind of edgy. Then we ended up with like, um, Preacher. <laughs> Preacher. Like, how was that on TV? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd not only witness it, but witness so much of it, I had to fast forward. Jesus <laughs> fighting Hitler. <laughs> like, all right, I get it. Um, <laughs> It's like even the first season is like, oh yeah, all those characters that you just got to know, dead. Mm -hmm. The bar's okay. been set really high, man. <laughs> okay, everyone, I got to go make a podcast okay. and uh, I'm going to bounce out of here. Cool. cool. Be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Jordan will be Bye back everyone. tomorrow night with something. And yeah, Serious Sam. More Serious Yay. Sam. They're going to run around in circles and shoot at the sky. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> and I think Pedro and I are going to hang out Friday as it's dependent on if I get angry enough to beat the section because mm. if I get angry enough there will be the okay I'll figure this out <laughs> that, that, that might, might take a bit to get through the whole thing but yeah <laughs> I didn't get angry enough to beat I didn't get angry enough to beat the pole dancer I just got the right RNG where the NPC wasn't going, <laughs> I'm just going to stand here in front of you and get wackadooed constantly. Aww. It was stuck on that mode for like another probably 20 rolls. It was like, hey, I'm going to be helping. It was good times. Cool. Oh, right. thank you, Creptic One. <laughs> Season uh, crept, 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 oh, you do not know me or my family, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Um, oh, thank you, Exalty. We'll see you. Arthurin, everyone, we love Bye. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>